Hello and welcome to a new presentation on Groundhog. It's been a while since the last video, but version 0.6 is out now, so I have some new exciting functionality to share with you. In Groundhog version 0.6, we're introducing SPT functionality, yet another important in-situ test, which you'll be able to process in a Pythonic way. So in this video, I'll briefly go over the other new features of Groundhog and then dive straight into the SPT processing. We'll look at how to ingest data, how to establish a soil layering and take into account the properties of the SPT sampler, and then we'll apply corrections and perform some SPT-based soil parameter correlations. In Groundhog 0.6, there's a couple of new features. First of all, there's two guides to get data from GINT into Python. Unlocking data is very important for your engineering projects and I'm very passionate to open up any data source to Python and GINT is no different. There's a couple of new correlations, both in the CPT module and the other modules, and of course the correlations that we're now introducing for the SPT. Furthermore, uh, we've also talked about our colleagues using imperial units, so it's becoming easier now to convert soil profile objects between meters and feet or any other units that you may desire. So, diving straight into SPT testing. SPT testing stands for Standard Penetration Testing and it is a standard sampler which is being driven into the soil by repeated hammer blows. The drive consists of three phases. The first phase, the first six inch of penetration, is called the seating drive. We record the numbers, but we effectively don't use it. And then the second and third six inch increment, those numbers of blows required to reach those penetrations are added together to give the SPT N number. There are several systems in terms of how the hammer release works, the hammer type, the sampler type, uh, and those can differ between countries, so we need to take those into account. In terms of data formats, there's a little bit less standardization than the CPT, and mostly SPT data is shared in Excel format. GINT is also widely used, and that's where the guides for getting GINT data into Python come in handy, because they effectively show how you can get SPT data from GINT into Python and filter it. AGS 4.0 also has the ISPT group, which is ready to take SPT data and can be used to, strand, to transfer it. Remember that you have the AGS converter object in Groundhog to convert any AGS group into a Python uh, or Pandas state frame. When we import SPT data, we will create an SPT processing object and that SPT processing object has two methods, the load Excel or the load pandas method, which we can use to either load data from an Excel file or a pandas data frame. Our SPT processing object is quite specific in terms of the column that it expects for the depth. So if your column in the input data is not called Z and then unit meter between square brackets, we need to tell SPT processing object what the, um, what the depth column is actually looking like. So in the example here, that column is simply called depth and we provide that as the Z key argument. If there is a different unit than meters, we also provide a multiplier, so here we make the conversion for, from feet into meters. Apologies to our Imperial uh, unit colleagues, but uh, Groundhog still works with meters as the standard, um, standard unit uh, of length, so everything needs to be converted into meters. The SPT N number is also expected, and there the expected column key is N and then unitless, so a dash or minus sign between square brackets. And if that is not the case, such as here, where the column is called SPT N, we provide it as the N key argument. If we execute that and then we plot SPT.data, 
we get the typical output which you have here, which includes the column with depth, the column with the SPT N number, and any other columns that may be present in your Excel file or Pandas data frame. The next step, like with any geotechnical engineering calculation, is to establish a layering. You will see lots of similarities between the SP, uh, SPT processing object and the CPT processing object. So if you have already performed CPT processing with Groundhog, you will see that everything is quite easy and straightforward and the same type of syntax is being used. So we will establish layering based on our findings or based on a borehole log. And for that, we create a soil profile object, which contains a depth from and depth to of each layer, a soil type and a total unit weight. We can read data from Excel. So if you prepare an Excel file with your soil profile, you can simply import the read Excel method from Ground, Groundhog's soil profile module and then read the Excel file. If the depth is given in features, then we will convert that depth into meters by actually saying that, uh, by actually applying the convert depth reference method, which is new in Groundhog uh, version 0.6, and saying that the new unit is meters and that the multiplier between feet and meters is 0 0.348. Uh, three, uh, sorry, 0 0.3048. Then we get the resulting uh, data frame. So first of all, on the left-hand side, you can see the data frame with the depths in feet. And then on the right-hand side, you have the data frame after converting it from feet to meters. Make sure that your layering contains all of the SPT data points so that we know for each SPT data point in which layer it sits. Then um, we will also need to provide a, uh, details on the SPT sampler. So we have a standardized data frame available within Groundhog, which is called default SPT properties. You can import it and print it to look at uh, the contents of that data frame. And these are actually inputs which are required for the further correction of SPT energy. So the correction to N60. Uh, you can do that correction based on tables, tables which are included in the Groundhog documentation. And those tables look at the country in which the system is used the hammer type, the hammer release, the sampler type, the borehole diameter, uh, and those effectively result in a choice of uh, four dif different eta factors. Uh, and you can also specify those eta factors directly. If you specify those eta factors directly, they will take precedence. So sometimes you can just simply bypass, uh, or if the country is not in the list where the SPT is being used, just enter your eta factors directly and they will be used as, a, uh, as defaults. So again, the data frame with the SPT sampler properties needs to contain all of the SPT data so that each uh, SPT data point can be uniquely associated with a sampler, uh, with sampler properties. So once we have our layering and our data frame or a soil profile with the properties of the sample, sampler, we will use, like in the uh, CPT processing object, the map properties function to associate each SPT data point with a corresponding layer and set of sampler properties. So we can say SPT.map properties and then provide our layer profile and our SPT sampler profile. The output of that will expand our data, our, so our data frame with SPT data and include for each data point the properties of the layer and the properties of the sampler, which we can use in further calculations. An effective stress calculation is also carried out, so you can supply water level to map properties as an optional keyword argument to work with water levels which are below the surface. The default is water level at the surface. To plot the SPT data, once it's been taken into uh, Groundhog, it's very easy. You just call the plot row data function and it will output your SPT N number versus depth. If you already have a layering specified, the layering will be plotted on top of the SPT data points. So you can check your layering based on those results as well. 
and adjust or refine if necessary. Then, our raw SPT number is not always straightforward to compare with other SPT measurements and we need to do some corrections and modifications in order to compare like with like. The first thing we will do is to do a correction for vertical effective stress level in granular soils. The correlation by Liao and Whitman is encoded in which uh, the SPT raw N number is converted into an N1 and N1, which takes into account the vertical effective stress. The second correction is the SPT N60 correction. So our SPT number, uh, the SPT has a given energy ratio, which is the ratio of the energy which is actually being delivered to the sampler to the theoretical energy. And in order to compare different sampling systems, we will correct the SPT numbers to work with a standard energy ratio of 60%. We will correct for borehole diameter, hammer type and release, sampler type and also the rod length because the longer the rod to the SPT, the more energy can get lost in that system. So performing the correction is a matter of using the apply correlation method on our SPT. So here we will apply the correlation overburden correction Liao and Whitman to correct for overburden in granular soils and we will select which key that we want to report. So if you look at the function for overburden correction according to Liao and Whitman in Groundhog, you will see that its output dictionary has a key CN and a key N1 which we can use. So here we will store both outputs of the correlation so that's why we're using that apply correlation method twice. And since the correction only applies in granular soils, we will apply it for the soil types that we think are granular. So apply for soil types takes a list with the soil types where we want to apply that correlation. Here we take silt and also silt stone because that correlation, that SPT and number is still reasonably low. So the output that we get there is a correction and you can see that the effective stress correction especially for the shallowest penetrations can be quite significant. So there the SPT N number goes up quite, uh, quite significantly whereas at deeper depths the differences are more limited. The second correction is the correction for N60 and there we simply apply the correlation N60 correction and we take the output key N60 and assign it to our data frame with data. So if we execute that method, we get our N60 back and we can see that the uh, SPT N number in the clay has reduced and for instance at uh, deeper depths the uh, SPT N number stays exactly the same this is for the default SPT sampler properties that we've selected for this example. So if we have N60, we can also correct that value for stress level. And that's simply done by applying CN to N60. So that's why we also stored CN in our data uh, in the previous step. In terms of applying soil parameter correlations, there are lots of soil parameter correlations for SPT. So far, Groundhog only has a couple. So a relative density correlation according to Kalhawi and Maine, and an undrained shear strength correlation according to Salgado. You can read the docs to find out more about them. Um, but these correlations can be applied to our SPT data provided that we have the correct uh, inputs. So that can be N1, can be N60, that depends on the correlation. And because a sample is taken with the SPT, often there are also index properties associated with the um, actual um, correlation. So we sometimes need to provide things like plasticity index or median grain size, which are the outputs of laboratory testing. So note that Groundhog expects specific column keys for these properties. So for instance, plasticity index takes the form PI and then percent in percentage sign in square brackets. 
and median grain size is d50 and then millimeters between square brackets. We can use the apply correlation method as we've done for the corrections. So we give it the name of our correlations, the um, out key, which is the name of the column that will be created in the data attribute, and the result key, which is the name of the output in the dictionary uh, of the function output dictionary. So here we can apply that relative density correlation by taking our result key dr uh, percent between square brackets and apply that to silt and siltstone, even though the relative density has not really been calibrated on those soils. So always be a bit careful where you apply relative density correlations and check the underlying data set. Um, and then the underrange shear strength in clay correlation, according to Salgado, is being applied in the clay layer. Plotting results of those soil parameter correlations plus a miniature log of uh, the layering is very straightforward with Groundhog. We can again, similar to the CPT, use the plot with properties with log method to plot um, these parameters versus depth. So all we need to do is in prop keys specify the different properties to be plotted in each panel. Here we will plot N and in 60 in the first panel, the relative density in the second panel and SU in the third panel. We need to provide whether legends are shown or not, uh, will be shown or not. So for N and in 60 we will show legends because there's two traces in the figure for relative density and under in shear strength we won't do that. Um, we need to provide the ranges for the plots, um, so from 0 to 60 for the n number, from 0 to 100 for relative density, and 0 to 200 for SU. Um, and then specify some ticks and uh, some axis titles. Finally, the depth range is also um, taken into account, and we can set a width for the plot using the layout argument. If we have soil types in our soil type column which are not encoded in the default fill color dict directory for Groundhog, we need to specify the colors which are used for that fill color dict. So here we will put the asphalt layer in black, a gravel layer in light grey, clay in brown, silt in light yellow and siltstone in grey to give us that mini log which is shown on the left hand side. So plotting all in all is really straightforward and you can get a good visualization of your SPT properties, your layering and your soil parameters derived from SPT all together in one simple plot. So that's it for this presentation. Um, I'm happy that we now uh, have been able to get SPT processing into Groundhog and I'm looking forward to implementing more correlations. If you have any questions, you can contact me via GitHub or send me an email. And now the docs are also hosted on Read the Docs since this release, so you can check up on the documentation over there. I definitely recommend you to always look at documentation when trying a new Python package. If you want to try the SPT tutorial notebook interactively, you can do so on Binder. And since version 6, we're also allowing commercial use of Groundhog provided that you support the package through Patreon. Also, you can support the package by uh, shopping for Groundhog apparel such as this fantastic t-shirt. Okay, that's it. See you next time around. Bye.